Medical studies have found that uh, there are strong health benefits when people have a grateful attitude. Thanksgiving holiday, a good time to express gratitude and reflect on what we have, as well as consider those who have less. Around this time each year, surgeon and scientist Dr. Raul John Dial and a medical team traveled to Peru to visit a hospital and share their expertise. Dr. John Dial this time had a very special traveling companion, his 12-year-old son, Zane. Good morning, Doctor. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. Gosh, that must have been quite the experience to bring your son. Yeah, he, you know, he's 12, but the environment what's, is what's unique. We, we went to Peru, and they have a nice part of the town, mm -hmm. skyscrapers, nice areas. Yeah. And the local surgeons that I work with there, they live in 30 minutes out of, out of town and in really mud huts, children two or three years old walking themselves to school. And it's really a charity hospital. If the government pays, they don't have a lot of equipment. And if you're poor, that's where you go. Mm. And you get substandard care. And then we always think about how we can improve that. But this trip was, uh, I didn't do any surgery there this time. Yeah. I, uh, I brought my 12-year-old son. And this was quite a journey for him. Yeah, well, tell us about that. He, I mean, he grows up, frankly, in a privileged yeah. place and in a, in a, has a privileged life to yeah. see that. What was his reaction, and what was the lesson you were trying to impart? Uh, yeah, I was a little worried, and the, and the idea actually came to me from, uh, we went to a bar mitzvah, and there was a mitzvah project. You have to do some yeah, community yeah. service, and I thought, well, you know, I, I'm going to, this could be, this could fit into that. I was a little worried, because when they live in Southern California, gated communities, perfect streets, so many protective areas, you know, the restaurants have an ABC category. Over there, it's really like, oh, you got hit by a car, you weren't paying attention. Oh, you had bad food and you got sick, it's really your fault. So it's a mm. very different mind frame. You have to really watch out for yourself. And the hospital's an intense environment, the yeah. sights, the sounds, and to see other children his age lying in a bed with, you know, with rusty rails, I was, I was a little bit worried about that. So when he first walked in, he needed a little bit of encouragement. I could feel there was a wall there. Mm. He didn't speak the language, and then after a while, um, after a while, you know, he started saying gracias and hello, and he started interacting with them. And, and what we did was we, um, he saved up his money, and he bought a bunch of books in Spanish and mm. toys on eBay, and we packed them up, and he took them down to the hospital, and it was like Santa Claus. He was passing them around, wow. and they were so, so appreciative, great. and it was great. And it was I'm great. sure there are parents watching this morning that are trying to figure out a way to get their own children yeah. involved in, in something like this, giving back or... or volunteering but then there's a little worry that maybe you yeah. scar them or they'd see something that maybe they're not ready for at a young age what do you tell parents about that that is the right question so I think not for my children I mean it's all everybody knows their own kids you know you have children as well 9 10 it's almost too much for them to see 11 12 I started real you know we started noticing he was paying attention to our conversations rather than the kids mm -hmm. and he was wondering and, and curious about the world and adults and I think 13, 14, he might have been too distracted with his phone and his friends back home. So I think 12, 13 is a nice age. And I believe it's okay to raise them in a shelter environment when they're young. I want them to be safe. But then yeah. there needs to be a structure where they see the rest of the world. I mean, right. when you see a, a four-year-old kid walking to school who's barefoot, and he looks over, I could just see right away. He didn't, we didn't have to communicate. He recognized all the stuff in our house, yeah. filling up our garage and closets. He got the sense that we live in a world of excess, and they have so little and, and where, where's my place in that? Yeah. And I think it's great to, to raise our kids with this idea early on, yeah. always give back. Find some way to give back. It can be little, it can be getting involved in something, but have that mindset as you're growing up so that when you're an adult, you do it. Sports, education, giving back, make that an element of it. And um, the pleasure was there as well. We stopped on the way back at Machu Picchu and then... Oh. And so we took that side trip, and um, there's a picture of that. Hopefully that they'll be able to pull up. And he was sitting there in front of the, the scene. Oh, my yeah. goodness. And then later on, we walked down, and there are llamas, and one tried to spit on him. So it has to be fun, too, if <laughs> yeah, you make yeah. it just all work. And, uh, and uh, it was really special. I'm glad yeah. I did it.